What's up guys? <clears throat> Excuse me, welcome back to the vlog. We're, cra we're crawling right now, okay? We're going like five miles an hour. Um, the reason you wanna go slow is so that it doesn't trip the ELD. Hmm? You gotta think. Because I wanna jump over to that blue beacon. We're in, we're in Barstow, California, we're at the Flying J. Um, I've done a ton of videos here in the parking lot over there in the back. So, um, so we're just crawling real, real slow. We're gonna just go right across the street. You know what I mean? That's all we're trying to do. Just go right across the street to the blue beacon. And, uh, and hopefully we can get a truck wash. Hopefully there's no line. This way we can get a truck wash and not start the ELD because it's gonna take them 30, 40 minutes to get the truck wash and I don't wanna start my ELD so that it starts my 14 hour clock. So that's, that's, that's why you wanna sometimes like slowly crawl around. Couple miles an hour, you know what I mean? You're moving slowly. Slow and steady wins the race. Couldn't make more sense than it does right now. <laughs> Well, they just finished it up. Let's take a look at her. Okay, so now I popped back over to the uh, to the Flying J. So we're now we're back. It's like we haven't moved at all. The logbook hasn't started yet. So. Uh, see, this is how this is how you be smart. You got to do smart hot shot. Uh, but I just want to top off the tanks. Here's the pump. Fill up for that lovely most for the lovely expensive California diesel. Um, I think it's like three ninety five a gallon right now. Uh, I'm gonna fill up real fast and then we'll uh, we'll hit the road. So tanks are full, let's pull forward. I think I'm actually gonna go really quickly, I think I'm gonna go park in a spot because I don't wanna block the fuel island. I'm gonna go grease that new equalizer that I installed yesterday. I'm gonna go grease the other equalizer, uh, maybe throw some grease in my bearings, um, just a couple of things. Um, but I'm gonna park in the handicap spot for five, 10 minutes, maybe 15, maybe 20. I'm gonna try to go fast. I just don't wanna block the fuel island while I'm greasing um, my trailer up a little bit. Okay, before I start greasing stuff, you guys have been mentioning that, hey, oh, Alex, get yourself some gloves. Um, so uh, two things, update. The wound uh, kinda looks not so good, but it looks okay. I don't know, it looks fine. Um, so it's, it, it is hurting less and less and it's getting better. Um, so that's one. Two is, yeah, that's probably what I should go do first before I start greasing my trailer. I'm gonna go buy some gloves and get some ice in the cup. So let's go do that first and then let's go grease my trailer. Okay, so got some gloves. I put my ice cup in the truck. Uh, now we just need to grab my grease gun, grease all the things and, uh, and then hit the road. And then also this is, I switched the logbook to on duty because this is technically like a PTI. So uh, I don't want to milk it. So let's just grease it and get out. Man, I kid you not. I just I just pulled out the greaser. I'm gonna go grab my pliers. So it looks like I'll be doing an equalizer box again sometime soon because this thing it just if you don't put grease on it, they they go bad really fast. The bushing in there, um, there's like a plastic bushing somewhere. Like it wears out really fast when there's no grease because you know obviously duh. So anyways. R.I.P. new uh, equalizer box, yay. And this is a new bolt, right? And this, uh, technically it's not the equalizer box, but this is the new bolt, right? And so I put a new bolt in as well. And so it's like, come on, man. Okay, so I greased the, uh, the other side off camera real fast because I want to get out of this uh, handicap spot um, and I want to hit the road so I'm gonna hit the road we are good to go let's uh, let's go to the exit and get the heck out of here 
Uh, no, scratch that. Really quick change of plans. Um, I'm, I'm, I routed out the miles. Uh, I have time to deliver on Monday in Florida, and I'm in Barstow, California. So uh, I want to try to find a car to go up there because freight has been really bad, like super dead. So I'm going to open up the search on the load board um, and just see if I can hop on. I have Central Dispatch, obviously, so I'm going to see if I can hop on Central and grab myself a car really fast um, because th this thing is paying me just over a buck a mile in, in, in the hopes of I would have a bunch of, like, some room left over, but I don't, so I need, like, another thousand bucks or so for the for the car to make it right about right around a buck fifty so that's what i'm shooting for right out of buck fifty to just to leave cali so that's not bad so i'm gonna try to pick something up along the way real fast i gotta open up this search so that's what i'm gonna do for the next couple minutes try to find a car and if i do great if not then whatever look at that guys where there's a will there's a way um so i've been here for <laughs> a couple hours now <laughs> mm, hold on i got something <laughs> looking all ridiculous with something stuck in my teeth okay so yeah i've been here a couple hours it's now 10 o'clock okay when did we start this vlog i don't know i forgot already but good news is i did book myself a car boys uh some kind of hyundai and the hyundai is picking up guess what in needles california it's going where yep you guessed it texas um, so the, so it's literally right along the way. And here's the reason I booked it. It's paying a thousand bucks, exactly like I planned. But in Texas, maybe I'll deliver Friday, Saturday. Cars still are open on Friday and Saturday. Brokers for cars are still open. So maybe I get another car from Texas to Florida. So that's the mission for today. Uh, we booked a car. Now we just got to go grab it. Barstow to Needles. That's the route that we're going to do. Um, and we're going to show up looking pretty because we just got the truck wash. So I'm pumped, boys. So yeah, let's, uh... What do you guys say we hit the road, yeah? Uh, wait, real quick, before we hit the road. Um, so I've been here for a while and I got hungry. So uh, for our one meal today, we got a Caesar salad. We got a second Caesar salad. Um, we got two bowls of Honey Nut Cheerios. We got one breakfast sandwich. Oh, and a kind bar. Um, and here's the milk for the cereal. Uh, so yeah. So as you can see, it's consistently like two salads and two sandwiches or two salads and some one sandwich with some uh, cereal, something like that. So in case you're keeping track of my food, which I'm sure you're not, because it doesn't matter. But basically, uh, that's what I'm having for breakfast. And uh, yeah, let's uh, now let's roll out and hit the road. <laughs> Bro, this is ridiculous. First of all, two things. First of all, on my gauge cluster, it says 111 degrees. Wow, dude, it is legitimately a scorcher right now. It is so hot. This is ridiculous. Like this, you can just, like, it's hard to breathe. The air is so hot, okay? Second of all, I don't know if you saw on the dash cam where I parked, but look at this. Now, the reason I'm parked where I am is because I thought I booked a car called a Hyundai Santa Fe, which is like a tiny little crossover. But then I realized I booked a Hyundai Sonata. <laughs> which is just like a you know it's like a toyota camry or something you know what i mean so as you can see right there i don't know can you can you see that right there can you see there's a ditch right here my trailer tires ended up in the ditch i'm basically level yet again so what i'm gonna do right now i saw the sonata over there so i'm gonna set up 
I'm gonna undo the ramps because the, the car is gonna go onto this ramp. So I'm gonna do undo those ramps. I'm gonna undo my aluminum ramps. I'm gonna set everything up so it's ready for the car so I can just drive up there and whatnot. Um, but oh my gosh, it's hot. I have a little bit of water in here. I'm gonna go get some ice when I'm gonna go grab the car because dude, it is so hot. I didn't realize like 111 degrees would, man, I'm, I can't even talk. <laughs> Anyways, let's uh, let's get all this stuff set up. Let's get all these ramps set up and whatnot. Okay, so here it is. Aluminum ramps right there. Those ramps right there. And you can also see that it's like, it's almost level. So I think we found a pretty good ditch. To, you know, like ditch, you know what I mean? To, to park the trailer uh, so that we can load up this Hyundai Sonata. All right, let's go grab it from the people. Um, so the story with the Sonata is, I think they broke down over here. There's a shop and they fixed it at the shop, but they live in Texas. And so they just left it here, flew home, and now it's fixed. And so now I'm taking it back to them because it's done being repaired. Um, so I think that's how the story goes. But hey, it works out for me. I got I make an extra thousand bucks. So this is correct. This is the Sonata right here, um, or I guess right here. <laughs> and they're telling me the it's a blown motor. So I don't know how I'm gonna quite get it up on the trailer, but we're gonna figure this out right now. Well, look what we got here. Some Hyundai keys. Okay, here's the problem with this Hyundai. Uh, it has serious rod knock. Is Toe Piglet gonna blow his second engine? <laughs> oh, Jesus, that's hilarious. All right, so I'm gonna get to work it and we'll load it up this car. So um, I'm not using my microphone right now because this sucks. Um, so this camera is set up over here and it's gonna record the side shot. That camera is, recorded, is recording up there and it's recording the front on. Um, I have 76 inches right here. I'm sorry for the wind. It's gonna probably gonna be really bad. 76 inches, the car is only 70. You can hear the rod knock, okay? And I'm gonna hold my phone while I'm driving it up. Okay, um, literally only one shot at this because the more strain I put the engine under, the worse it is. So the goal is to get as close as possible to the rail. Okay, that's gonna have to do it. You can see I aired on the side of the driver's side, so it's not touching. Um, this thing is on it, that's good. And and you can see I have a ton of room over here. So I, I, I wanted to play it safe, and so I did, uh, and it looks good.
So the first thing um, is I have my scale ticket, okay? Now, where's my phone? Right here. So I'm going to put it on the screen so you guys can see it. So my scale ticket, and this is the first question I have for you guys. What's better? So as you can see, uh, I'm looking at my phone, but you have it on your screen. So as you can see, I have 5,220 pounds on my steer, 7,140 pounds on my drive, and 12,960 pounds on my trailer axles, and a total of 25,320 pounds. So overall, my, my overall weight, excellent stuff. Like I almost know what I'm doing, <laughs> right? But the issue is I downrated my trailer axle to 12,000. And so now technically, air quotes, I'm 960 pounds overweight. However, let's say I had a single rear wheel truck. And that single rear wheel truck, if you recall, a Ram 3500 single rear wheel has a 7,000 pound rear axle. Now, after this, I filled up my tank for like 20 gallons or something. So technically, I have like 7,200 on my rear axle. So what's better? To artificially be overweight on your trailer axle or to actually be overweight on your drive axle? That's the question. Now, technically, I could drive, drive the car up a little bit further up the ramp, but I don't want to do that because, dude, that thing, I don't want to start that thing anymore. Um, so if it is an issue, I could literally just move the car up a little bit. But I think DOT, if I, I mean, if I get an inspection, I think DOT will say, ah, 25.3, bro, he's Gucci. Anyway, so that's the question, you guys. What's better? to this kind of weight or to consistently be actually overweight on your drives. So I'm curious to hear what you guys think about that. The other thing is, I wasn't really sure how to strap this car. Take it easy in the comments, I guess, I don't know. But, so that's why the straps are, you know, I did the rim straps because over the wheel, they're not as effective. Um, so I, I went through the rim, but as you can see, I put one of these extra straps. And then the front though is the difficult part because uh, I mean, you know, so I put, I put it so right here, so it doesn't cut straps right here, right there and there on the round, like, so the rim, I, I think this is okay. I didn't want to strap it to the ramp because I don't know. I don't know. I'm, 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 I look forward to your comments too. Uh, I, I guess I could have chained it, but then the chain would have scratched the ramp a little more, I guess. I don't know. I am totally open to your guys' suggestions and how to strap something like this okay uh so i think that's gonna do it for the vlog thanks for tuning in i'll see you guys in the next video peace